All right. We've got outer voice counterpoint established. Now it's time to move into the inner parts and flush out the chords. Here we're dealing with a one chord, so we need scale degrees one, three, and five. We need, since we're in G, then G, B, and D. There, we're going to hit on a couple principles over and over as we fill in these inner parts. Um, one of them is that we want to try and fill out the chord, but if we, if we have to omit something, the thing to omit is the chordal fifth. If you have to omit something, the chordal fifth is fine to omit. That's if you need to. We'd like to fill out the whole chord, but um, let's see. Omissions, and then the other thing is doubling. When you go to double something, try not to double the third above the base. Now I know that you've probably heard it said that you should not double the chordal third, but I'm talking about the third above the base because it just happens too frequently that you end up doubling the chordal third. For instance, when you have a 2-6 chord, the bass note, let's say we're, we're in G, um, in this context, a 2-6 in any key, the bass note gets doubled all the time. Okay, so if you're in G, you're dealing with an A chord. And what you're doing is putting it in first inversion and getting this. And this, scale degree four, is the note that gets doubled all the time. So scratch that idea that you should be doubling the chordal third and change that to be don't double the third above the bass. If, now doubling fifths is, is fine. That's a, a good principle that we've all learned. Stick with that. Do double or fifth. But better yet, just to double the root unless it's a tendency tone. So we might as well say this. Do not double a tendency tone. What would happen if you double a tendency tone? Say you double the leading tone. Well, now you've got two things that need to resolve. And when they do resolve, you now have parallel octaves. They're going to move together. They're going to move exactly the same way. So don't double a tendency tone because, first of all, it sounds it sounds like you've weighted the wrong thing. It sounds unstable and strange and awkward. But then when you go to resolve, you'll destroy your counterpoint as well. If I had to summarize all this, I'd say basically this. You want to double what's most stable. Roots, if they're not tendency tones, are stable. Fifths, chordal fifths are stable. Thirds, being less pure, are less stable. And so we don't want to double them. The underlying principle then in doubling is find the stable thing and double it. Okay, now, now I think we're ready to get into this. So we need these notes, G, B, D. And we can complete this chord with no problems at all. And look at what we're, what we're doubling. We've got two Gs. We've got the bass note doubled. And that's, that's good. Often we'll end up doubling the bass note. And that's often the root as well. Okay, so I'm going to pick, I think I'll go ahead and stick with keyboard style, which is when you put one note in the bass and everybody else up top. All right, so let's try this now. Five, four, three. When we deal with a, a dominant seventh chord, in this case an inversion, we're going to have to worry about our tendency tones. We have to worry about a leading tone and a chordal seventh and their resolutions. 
Okay, so let's, let's work this one out. If I'm in G, what is a 5, 7 chord? Well, it's, it's a D7. So I need D, F sharp, A, and C. I can keep my D. D, F sharp, missing that, let's fill it in. F sharp, A, oh shoot, see I've got two, I've got two A's. Oh wow, see now this is going to cause some trouble, because I'm doubling this note. I can't fit in my C, I really need one more note in that chord. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board here and revise my counter, my outer voice counterpoint a little bit. I've got an, a chord here that requires four different parts, four different notes. In doubling here, it says, you know what, we, we could, we could drop one thing. Uh, where is it? Oh, our omission, there it is. Our omission. We can omit the chordal fifth. And we've doubled the, the fifth over here. We've used the one thing that we could leave out. We're in a bind. We need every member of this chord. Because it's here in the bass. We can't get rid of that now. Okay, so we're going to have to take away this A. Up top. Revise it. Okay, I think what I'll do is this. One, seven, four, three, two, one, seven, one. That works pretty well. Okay, we'll work with that. I'm going to fill in this chord again. G, B, D. I'm doubling the G in the bass. Okay, again, we want D7. I like to take the chord, spell it out in my mind, and make sure I have all the chord elements that I need. So I need D, F sharp, A, C. Take them in, in order. D, I can keep it. D, F sharp, A, and I need a C, so I'll slip that in here. Okay, there we go, got it. Now notice what I'm doing. I'm, if I can keep a note, I keep it. If I can move by step, I move by step. That's called smooth voice leading. You move the least possible in every voice. You might have heard it said this way, keep common tones and move by step. That works, that's good. Now we're ready to resolve this chord, and I'm going to find everything that needs to resolve and make sure that it resolves from the very start. So I know that this is a special note. In the key of G, that's the leading tone. And leading tones resolve up by half step. Well, we did that already by writing that upper part. That's done for us. But there's that other seventh, the chordal seventh, and that's the C, D, F sharp, A, C, the chordal seventh. And it needs to resolve down by step. So we'll take that note and resolve it right away. It needs to go to B. Has to. OK, now the D will keep. And that will flush out our chord. G, B, D. We've got a couple Bs. We've doubled the chordal third. Traditionally, you'd say, ah, oh, that's not, I mean, in a lot of textbooks anyway, the tradition is to say, don't double the chordal third, but in practice, the chordal third gets doubled a lot of the time. This is one of those cases where you, you have to double the chordal third. The better way to state that is don't double the third above the bass. Keep that rule, but discard the one about chord, chordal third. All right, now we're ready to do the five, six, five. I'm going to do it exactly the same way. I'm going to say I need a D7 because I'm dealing with a dominant seventh chord in G major. And then work up through the chord, making sure you've got every note in it. D, got it. F sharp, got it. A, we're missing that. Let's see. I can put it down here. I'm not going to put it up here. Because that involved big leaps. I want smooth voice leading. So I'll put it there. D, F sharp, A, C. Okay, good. Got it all. Now, let's check our resolutions. Notice I'm doing that first. I'm, I'm, I'm not even worrying about what this chord is. I'm primarily resolving this chord even before I leave it. 
this is done for us, but when you go D F sharp A C, you know that's a chordal seventh. You might as well write the resolution before you even move on. But that's given for us in the outer part. Let's find the other one. Oh yeah, here it is. The leading tone. The other seven. Seven from the tone. It's resolved for us as well. It's given by the by these Roman numerals figures below. All right, great. So those are taken care of. We've taken care of our tendency tones. Now we just need to concentrate on trying to fill out this chord, flush it out. We need a D still. We're missing it. The chord is G, B, D, the tonic. G, B, D. Oh, we can put it here. Our poor altos are really getting stuck there, so we might want to see if we can get a little more variety for them. We don't want them to have some insurrection here, an uprising of altos. Do. Okay, we could double, we've got every chord member. We could double the root or the fifth. Well, we could do this. If I just give that a stem for both alto tenor parts, that works. I could also go down and move to here, take the A down to a, a G, but then I'm going to get kind of in the way of my bass line, which is then going to jump up high. Now maybe I'm going to have to change my bass. We'll see. If this is going to run into trouble with the upper parts, you know, that's my choice. I can write that C down an octave if I like. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm going to get some altitude in the tenor to try and keep out of the way of the bass at this point. I'll stick with that one note for both altos and tenors. All right, now we're ready for the 542. Again, D7. I'm spelling it in my mind. D, F sharp, A, C. I need a D. I need an F sharp. Don't have it yet, so we need to supply it. D, F sharp, A, and C. All right, we've got all the members that we need. <clears throat> you know, it's a pattern. <laughs> Get the notes, resolve it right off. I see one resolution happening already. That's the chordal seventh resolving down by step. Find the leading tone, and we can resolve it. I think at this point, though, I should tell you about an exception. There are exceptions to both of these tendency tones resolution. And let me tell you about this one right now. So leading tones go up by half step unless they're in an inner voice. And in an inner voice, if it's in an inner voice, you have this one bit of freedom. Instead of going up by half step, you can leap down a third to D in this case, because we're in the key of G. So we're going to take this down to, yes, a member in the tonic. It's not as if we're not resolving the whole chord, but we're taking that one note, the leading tone, and moving it down to D. And that's fine. I think I'll go ahead and do that to illustrate. OK, and then. We need the tenor part to go somewhere, and I'm going to let it land on that D as well. It's just going to stick and stay on D for that. Two more chords to do. We just got to get from our 5 7 to our 1. We're dealing with a D7 chord. I'm going to spell up and make sure I get every note D, F sharp. I need an A and a C. Those two are missing. We're going to have to put them both there. We, don't, we can't put them up above. We're stuck with inner parts. So this will leap down here and there. That's fine. Okay. D, F sharp, A, C. We've got them all. Now we need to resolve them. These, of course, are given so that the leading tone is done for us. We've already made sure to do that when we were doing the outer voice counterpoint. But we still have the chordal seventh, D, F sharp, A, C. C needs to resolve. And because it's the chordal seventh, it needs to resolve down by step. C goes down to B. That's the scale degree four to three motion we've talked about. All right, now we, the A is free to go either direction. But instead of doubling this third here, which is less stable, Let's double the G, which is more stable. 
There we go. Now you might look at that and say, what in the world? We've got three G's. G here, G there, and G in the base. That's a lot of G's. And we've omitted one thing. We have the chordal third, B, right here, but no D in any octave. That's okay because we can omit the chordal fifth. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you triple the root at a cadence, that's fine. Now sometimes you'll have a choice. If you have the leading tone in an inner part, you'll be able to use this bit of freedom that it has when it's in an inner part. Here we don't have that freedom. We can't just take the leading tone down to D because it's the uppermost voice. And there, the general principle always holds true. The leading tone resolves up by half step. So that's what it has to do here.